Hey everybody, Werewitch here. We are back with a dev update from Stunlock Studios, the creators of V Rising. Let's get into it. Some really cool changes coming up. Okay, this is dev update 25, Spellcraft Unbound. Blessings for the bloodthirsty. With great enthusiasm, we bring you yet another developer update from the crypts of Stunlock Studios. Today, we'll be delving into changes with the progression. From how spells are acquired to recipes and the quality of unlife that smooths the whole experience into a delightful, intuitive process, we aim to put a new twist on how you play, de delivering much-desired changes in unexpected packages. All right, uh, they go over right here speaking about how the normal progression is for a player. Go after V-Bloods, you get spells, you unlock new machines, crafting machines, different items. And um, I don't believe that they are changing that. At least they're not speaking on that explicitly. They talk about a new thing that you're going to be getting as you take out V-Bloods or kill V-Bloods. Okay, uh, let's find where this is at. Oh, do, 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 path becoming. Uh, let's shake it up and add some deadly spice to your life. A little deviation for you deviants who enjoy multiple playthroughs. Flexibility for everyone, including those enjoying their first dive through the challenges of embracing their vampire nature. Introducing spell points. When you slay certain V-Bloods and drain them of their power, in addition to any recipes imparted through their blood knowledge, they give you a fraction of magical energy. These spell points come in various flavors divided by spell school and then further divided into three tiers. For instance, Slain Clive the Firestarter now awards the recipe for the alchemy table, minor explosive boxes, and one tier one chaos point. As you can see there, that's been added to... Uh, the blood knowledge items that get unlocked. Spellbook has been redesigned with these changes. Uh, the spells are divided between three tiers. Each tier represents a level of complexity rather than strength. Vampires will be introduced to more complex spells after they've gotten their feet wet, unlocking the second tier of spells fairly early in their journey into Dunley Farms with Vincent the Frostbringer and Craig the Undead General. This is awesome. This is very cool. You can't see my cursor because I did not set it up that way. My fault. But I am circling this new redesigned uh, spell book. This is very, very neat. Okay, this will offer tremendous flexibility in the journey without sacrificing meaningful progression or overwhelming newer players with too many confusing options. Yeah, sure. By the, They didn't put that. I said that. For instance, by the time you're making your way into Act 2, where you only had access to Merciless Charge, you could now have access to two of four potential ultimates, including a new one that we think the necromancers out there are really going to enjoy. That's me. This is awesome. As you can see, you've got little, little bone buddies, little skelly buddies that are uh, popping up out of the ground here. That is... That's sick. I'm very excited about that. That looks awesome. This also offers us more freedom in how we design V-Bloods for the future, which we've been able to employ in the designs of the new bosses in 1.0. Spells can be built without needing to closely associate or theme them with a boss to accompany them, letting us be a little more creative in our magic and monster design going forward without them restricting one another. So that's a great thing. That's really cool. That means we're going to... They're essentially breaking their chains of how they had to connect a specific spell, a specific boss, and you can kind of see where that was hit or miss anyway. So I think this is a welcome change, at least on my end, it's just my opinion. Uh, yours may differ. Uh, moving on, master your magic. We aren't just changing how spell progression works. There's more to it than that. We are also adding new ways to advance your vampire through a new station we're calling the Altar of Stygian Awakening. Here you'll tap into ancient knowledge to unlock your forgotten potential. Uh, this is an interesting angle of this. I'm trying to understand if they are in a corner of a room. 
Yeah. I'm a builder in our clan, so I immediately pay attention to these things. I mean, I see the torches, but I'm interested how this is going to fit in. Um, looks good. Looks awesome. But just interested and curious to how that's going to work. Is that a corner? I don't know. Each spell school has a tier of passive effect that can be unlocked to provide bonuses that modify your gameplay. Some are as simple as situational boosts and effectiveness. Others provide unique opportunities like spawning blood orbs that you can pick up to recover health or summoning a skeletal warrior after you feed. Being tied to your altar, these effects can be unlocked by gathering materials from the new in-game zone events and pooling together with your clanmates to unlock them one at a time in whatever order you like. This means you'll share a sort of clan-wide progression, encouraging you to work together towards a common goal that empowers you and, or you all, excuse me, and prepares you for the oncoming challenges of facing the greatest threats to your rise. You can see here there is a tier one top left corner underneath the passive. It's highlighted there. It says blood spray, critical strike, strikes, leeches 5% health, and there's a 25% chance to spawn a blood orb when killing a target affected by a leech. Very cool. All these, I can, my mind's running wild with what these different uh, icons could be, but man, it looks good. That is very cool. Um, that's going to be good for guilds to feel like they are uh, working together towards a goal. Sometimes you can, you know, not have a direction you need to go. That's something you can do. I think that's great. It creates game loop. Good stuff. All right, next up is Everybody Hates Moving is the title here. And they essentially uh, go in to explain that there's no good way to move your stuff. We always just build new castles. Um, uh, but this is this is neat what they're doing. They've uh, taken on a lot of feedback from players and um, they've decided to go the route of being able to just essentially break down your old castle and build it somewhere else. We'll go over that. We're experimenting with a way to make it easier. Simply relocate. In a feature we're working very hard to try and make available for 1.0. Uh, we're making moving your entire castle from one location to another as painless as possible. The process is fairly simple. Place a new structure. We've place a new structure we've made that will act as a castle heart in your relocated castle in an unreserved territory, then interact with it. You can now connect that heart to the real castle heart that you have ownership of. And I think they're showing here, uh, you're going to select the castle and then you're going to have whatever this item is that they're talking about. And then um, that's what you'll be connecting to there. When you do so, you get access to a new version of the build menu. With this build menu, you have access to every individual piece placed in the connected castle and can piece together an entirely new stronghold using the parts you already own. It shows someone, uh, looks like they're building here. Once you confirm it, your old castle disappears and your new one solidifies and forms. Any pieces that went unused are reduced to their base materials for you to reuse as you like. Just make sure you remember to make space for your prisoners and servants. There are some structures you must place to complete the move so you won't be able to leave them behind. As you know, inside the game, you get uh, prisoners. You know, you don't want to have your 100% rogue blood prisoner left back at your old base and i think that you just have to have those cages set up for them make sure you've got coffins for your servants so on and so forth uh nice confirmation page here complete castle relocation relocate structures and items from the linked castle to the new territory zero out of 166 structures place uh yeah yeah they're saying right here that the ui uh for the section is not complete looks fine to me then just like that, you've relocated entirely from one corner of Vardaron to any other as easily as placing it down to your castle heart's content. All right. Well, that is pretty cool news. I'm very excited about the new uh, changes to spells, how you obtain them, how you choose what you get. Uh, the moving the castle stuff is going to be very helpful. Um, uh, that stuff just makes me so nervous. Let me know in the comments below if that stuff makes you nervous too. Uh, 
that needs to go off without a hitch or you're going to have a lot of angry players if something doesn't work out right you know if you make some kind of mistake uh, if you like this video we should have other news and updates coming soon uh, reaction videos stuff like that uh, thanks for watching